palette. Good morning, lives of war. Bless the name of the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tested and tried. He is a shield for all those who take refuge and put their trust in him. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. Our firm impenetrable rock and our redeemer. Your word has revived, revived us and given us life, God. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The sum of your word is true. And every one of your righteous decrees endures forever. We will worship your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and for your truth and faithfulness. For you have exalted above all else your name and your word. And you have magnified your word above all your name. God, let our prayer be set forth as incense before you. The lifting up of our hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O oh Lord, before our mouths. Watch at the door of our lips. He who brings an offering of prayer and thanksgiving honors and glorifies you. And he who orders his, his way aright, who prepares the way, that we may show him, to him we will demonstrate the salvation of God. Our mouth shall be filled with your praise and with your honor all the day. Because your loving kindness is better than life, our lips shall praise you. So will we bless your, you while we live, we will lift up our hands in your name. Your testimonies are our delight and our counsel. Worship is an intricate part of the day. It has the ability to soften the heart. It has the ability to change your whole trajectory. So I'm telling you and I'm encouraging you all as wives, as daughters of the king, learn how to worship even in your weakest state. Because it's something about being in the presence of God in the midst of worship where you can no longer remain the same. You can no longer remain um, frustrated. You can no longer remain um, at odds.
consume it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. So today is day two. And this morning we are praying that our husbands would be men of prayer. And may I add that I am praying that you become wives who war. Prayer, that you become wives who war, pray. Um, because the Bible declares that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. When the enemy begins to cause confusion and I say the enemy because God is not the author of confusion so when the enemy begins to cause confusion you no longer are fighting your husband you are fighting the spirit that has then attached itself to him and that is what you need to wage war against. You are not waging war against your husband in the physical. You are waging war against the spirit that has attached itself to your husband. You must pray for a spirit of discernment so that you can discern what the spirit is so you'll know how and what it is you are fighting. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against spiritual wickedness, against darkness, right? Learn how to war in the spirit realm so that you can easily identify what it is you are now waging war against. So that you can immediately remove the threat and become a wife who wars and intercedes on the behalf of your husband. Today's verse is taken out of James 5, 16 through 18. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. Elijah was a man, excuse me, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. Then he prayed again and the sky poured rain and the earth produced its fruit. James 5, 16 through 18. A man of prayer prays. It is his first line of defense and his most effective offensive strategy. 
Prayer is not an afterthought for a man of prayer. Let me just make sure I encourage you that prayer should not be an afterthought as a woman of prayer either. It is not a last ditch engagement with the eternal, but it is the first thing that should come to mind. Prayer is not just a demonstration of discipline and determination, but a desperate dependence on God. It is conversing with our Father, not just asking God for good goodies and guarantees, because He is no genie in a bottle. The man of prayer enters into intimacy, into me see with the Almighty. He realizes that God is in control and His wisdom is needed for life and work. Prayer precludes pain by providing patience. It forecasts disaster by giving warning. It discerns clumsy and destructive decisions by cultivating understanding and discernment. Prayer gets you close to the Father. You should be assuming the positions as wives on the behalf of your husband. Denise, what position? The position of worship, the position of prayer, the position of laying prostrate at the Father's feet. This isn't about you. A man of prayer avoids self-inflicted problems because he prays first. Prayer is medicine for the sick and refreshment for the soul. Prayer may be the best gift that you can give someone, i.e. your husband. As a wife, the moment you started down the aisle, God put a cloth on you. He cloaked you in a mantle. And that became that you are your husband's best advocate in prayer. You can get a prayer through greater than his mother. Why? Because you two are now becoming one. God has yoked you together. And God has given you the power necessary to pray for him. You know his heart. You are the closest thing to him besides his mother. You may not, you may not have silver and gold to give, wives, but you can give prayer. Acts 3 and 6, a man of prayer does not talk about praying. With a symbol, I'll pray for you. With a seriousness of purpose and one requesting prayer, he stops and does it immediately. Be a woman and man of your word. We're praying that our husbands would be men of prayer. Not that they would just talk about it, but that they would actually be about it. As you hear him pray, a peace and calm should overcome you. It is encouragement. That he's living the life that you've prayed for. That God has placed on the inside of him. A man of prayer prays for his spouse and for the spouses of his children. He leads his wife in prayer. He keeps his logical mind in check by checking in with Christ. He should start by getting on his knees each morning. He should be assuming the position, which is the posture, which is important for the man of God to be in as he prays. Even in that, his statue is humble and dependent upon God the Father. 
Therefore, it's important that he uphold himself daily before our Father. If at all possible, prostrate on the floor. He should also be including or making a prayer list so that as he goes before the Father, he exactly knows what it is. He is strategic in when he is talking to daddy. A man of prayer is still a man in recovery from sin. Sin does not cease to hound the man who prays, but it drives him to prayer. Sin does not stop hounding our husbands, although they are praying, but it should drive them to prayer. Instead of them running from God, they should be running to God. Because it's hard to sin while you pray. There is accountability to God that both there's the man of prayer in his everyday life. There is a direct correlation between prayer and purposeful living. A man of prayer is not a title that comes with a badge to flaunt. Instead, it is a discreet lifestyle of continual prayer. It will become his habit. It will become his lifeline. It will be like oxygen to someone who can no longer breathe. It is like eating and sleeping. It becomes necessary, vital. It becomes a requirement. It is the core curriculum. A man of prayer cannot be pigeonholed as to his behaviors and speech. Our husbands come in all shapes and sizes, depending on his God-given temperament, his God-given physical body. Many are humorous, some are humble, some are loud, some are quiet. Some are spontaneous and some are methodical. Some are creative and some are concrete. Some are eloquent and yet some are so simple. However, there is one thing that they must not forget. That God formed them in his image. And because he formed them in his image, he's requiring them to become like him. So God, this morning, we thank you that our lives and our husband's lives are centered around prayer. For we understand that prayer is the most powerful and least used resource in our lives. But we thank you that we don't have to be a super Christian for God to answer our prayers. We often think the great characters of the Bible were special or ordinary men. However, in James 5, 16 and 18, the verse says that Elijah, one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament was a regular old man. There was nothing special about him. What would change in our prayer life if we truly believed in the power of prayer? 
Wives, how would you pray differently if you honestly believe the prayers that you were uttering out of your mouth? The Bible says that the prayers of a righteous man availeth much power. Righteous, those that are in right standing with God. Too often, our weak faith produces weak praying. We lift up little prayers to a little God because our faith is weak. But we serve a God who is more than able. We serve a God that is waiting to hear you. Psalms 40 and 1 says, I waited patiently on the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. God is calling our husbands to be a man of prayer. A man who takes hold of God and won't let go. A man who not only spends time with God in prayer, but sees God answer his prayers. Are you praying that God would begin to answer the prayers of your husband so that his faith can be renewed, so that his faith can be elevated to the next level? What are you speaking out of your mouth as a wife? When men pray, God shows up. And when God shows up, things begin to happen. As you pray for your husbands today, pray God births in him a deep passion for prayer and not superficial prayers, but prayers that are set for deliverance, prayers that are set to change the trajectory of your children. Whether babies or adults, Let him see that God answers the prayers of regular people. That it doesn't matter what his title is. Because God is not moved by a title. God is moved by our prayers. God is moved by his word. And he's waiting to hear his word prayed back to him so that he can show up on the scene. That he can then begin to dispatch his angels to watch God over us. God, restore our husbands. Restore them, God. Where they stopped praying because they weren't seeing any change. God, restore them. Where they felt like their prayers were not being answered, God. God sends signs, wonders, and miracles so that they can see that you are yet on the throne. But just because you sit high, you still look low, God, and you hear and you respond. Restore them, God. Keep 
heal the hurt that caused them to stop praying. For every husband that has been hurt by ministry, heal them, God. For every husband that's been hurt by ministry, God, heal them, restore them, oh God. God, we pray on this morning that our husbands will take the time to pour out their hearts to you that they'll look to you for guidance and stand in faith for what they are asking and believing for. God, we're asking you to work it in their favor. God, you are a mender of the broken. God, you are Bel Perazine. God, break our husbands through on this morning. Give them victory in their prayers, God. Give them victory in their life. Victory over their thoughts. Victory over their temperament. Victory, Lord God, on their jobs. Victory in their families, God. Victory in their children, God. God, restore relationships between fathers and sons. Victory, God. We take authority over every foul spirit. Now, in the natural sublime name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, and we call it void of its power in Jesus' name. We bind up every negative thought and we cast it into a sea of darkness, never to return again. God, we thank you that our husbands are victorious over trauma, that they are victorious. God, you are enough. God, we thank you for victory. We thank you for success. We thank you for triumph over an enemy in battle or war. First Corinthians 15 and 57 says, but thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So today, Lord God, we pronounce the blessing of unity and oneness upon our marriages. We declare respect for our spouses and godly reverence is thriving in our marriages. We speak fruitfulness and success over our marriages. Every plan of favorite productivity is, is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every plan of flawed productivity is destroyed in the name of Jesus. We decree favor an abundance of love, accurate communication, and harmony flows freely in our marriages in Jesus' name. We release elevated levels of submission over our lives to serve and honor our spouses. God, we break all demonic inspired programs against our marriages 
and root out all strategies of failure. We proclaim peace and freedom from all quarreling, arguing, and marital sabotage in Jesus' name. We forbid any and all negative effects from past relationships, hurts, wounds, and traumatic experience to access our marriages on today. All demonic networks of lust, perversion, and adultery are displaced and rendered inoperative against our marriages. We come against the spirit of seduction and illegal conversations that we abort them in the spirit realm through the blood of Jesus. God, and we apply the blood of Jesus over our husbands today, God, that no weapon formed against them would prosper. God, in every tongue that rises up against them, you would condemn and prove to be in the wrong. God, we command every stone of reproach to be rolled away from grave openings where our marriages have been buried by false burdens, deceit, and confusion. We decree, Lord God, that our marriages rise from every grave pit and tomb. We speak life over our marriages in the mighty and righteous name of Jesus, the son of the living God. God, all cords of hurt, disappointment, and setbacks connected to our marriages to defeat and sever and cast away will be dead now in Jesus' name. We speak new levels of unity and victory and agreement over our homes and over our marriages. So God, on today, we thank you for what you have done. We thank you for what you are doing, God. God, and we pray that we would persevere in prayer. Father God, we know that the course that has been set before us is clear. You have called us into this prayer challenge to respond to the many prayer requests we have received to those who need an agreement or who don't know how to pray for themselves. Lord, you are the vine dresser and Jesus is the vine. And we are the branch. So we remain in him and he remains in us. And our prayers bear much fruit. Apart from him, we can do nothing. But Father, at times we are tempted to grow weary and overburdened with pain and heartache. God, help us to remember that Jesus said, come unto me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. God, take our, take, for you told us to take your yoke and to learn from you, for you are gentle and humble in heart. And God, you said that we would find rest for our soul, to take your yoke, for your yoke is easy. And your burden is light. God, you said that we ought to always pray and not to turn powerful, faint, move hearts, or give up. God, we are earnest and we are unwearied and we are steadfast in this prayer challenge. Remain in alert and intent. We'll make our prayers with thanksgiving be known unto you. God, and since we are surrounded by a, cl a great cloud of witnesses, we throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. And we will run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. God, we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of your throne. 
We consider him on this morning who endured such opposition from sinful men so that we would not grow weary and lose heart during times of intercession. That this is our prayer on this morning as wives who war. And it is so in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is nothing wrong with the pain. It's called obedience. And we thank God for what He has done on today. And we will see you all on tomorrow. Uh, our guest intercessor. who has aligned herself with me during the challenge. Um, so I will see you all in the morning. Stay the way. Continue to worship. Continue to cover your husbands in prayer that they can become men of prayer. And that God will begin to move on their behalf so they can see their prayers being answered and regain their hope and their faith 
in God? Should that be an issue? I love you all. Have an amazing day.